want to uh, invite uh, Jeff Ettinger to uh, come up. We'll follow one dynamic CEO with another. Now, you know, I was growing up, uh, I always thought Hormel meant chili and, uh, and have it as a, as a kid. But then I got to learn that Hormel also means innovation in terms of biofortification and adding elements into food. When Joe Swedberg came to my office, got, I got my staff there, he had a mixing bowl and he made up Spammy for us. We were like a focus group testing Spammy. And then I've been to Guatemala and seen on the ground what Hormel is doing to fight and uh, they're with students who are experiencing stunting and to address it. So it's uh, so wonderful to, uh, to have you with us, uh, what your company is doing. And there's also a great story to build. You're, you're an attorney, right? A lawyer who was put in charge of Hormel, a brand, the big chili. And uh, I mean, that sounds like a recipe for uh, something less than success, except, except that made it half as much fat in it, it tasted better, and most important in the bottom line, sales went up. So, Jeff Ettinger, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the World Food Prize and introduce you. Thank you so much. So it is indeed my pleasure to represent Hormel Foods today. Uh, we're located just across the border in southern Minnesota in a rural town of 20,000 Austin, Minnesota where George Hormel founded the company 125 years ago in 1891. And similar to Kellogg's story, George and his son Jay had the foresight to create a public foundation. In our case, that foundation owns 48% of our company, and that's been a key element of our ability to take a long-term perspective and to always have that community in mind. George and Jay founded the company with the principles of quality, integrity, and innovation. Innovation is clearly in the form of new products, but also innovation in a sense of doing a better job every day in whatever element of the company that you belong in. On the philanthropy side, as is common with many food companies, we clearly are interested in the area of hunger alleviation, uh, primarily initially here in the United States, both in terms of product donations and cash donations, and more recently on a broad basis. We're also very honored to have Dr. Elsa Morano, I believe is in the crowd here today. Hey, hey, there's Elsa. So Elsa runs the Borlaug Institute at Texas A&M University, and she's been a, a member of our board of directors for the past 10 years, and a great representative on areas of food safety, on food quality, and many other topics. So uh, I mentioned that our company had a long legacy of being involved with food banks and being involved with relief efforts on a domestic basis. Uh, we saw this statement from Mr. Gates back in 2008 about the notion of maybe kind of taking it up a step of turning your company's talent and innovation loose toward a cause beyond just the cash donation and beyond maybe just the volunteer hours. And indeed, as was mentioned in the introduction, I was an attorney originally with the company. Uh, I remember from my attorney days the concept of doing pro bono work, of, of doing work for free that would benefit someone in society. And interestingly, that benefits actually the person doing the work as well. I think you get to be creative, you get to get out of your normal shell and have an opportunity to stretch yourself. And so we at the company decided to kind of embrace that spirit in terms of what we saw in the world and what, what role Hormel Foods might be able to play in that regard. There's a product that many of you are familiar with called Plumpy Nut that was introduced into Africa a number of years ago. And I read the story about Plumpy Nut about the same time as Mr. Gates' statement from Davos came out. And the story there, as I understood it, was that they were able to deliver this shelf-stable, easy-to-distribute product that you could use right in the village for relief basis, as opposed to some other complex forms of intervention. And it struck me that in a way that's kind of the story of Spam, uh, one of the products that Hormel is very well known for, and uh, uh, an integral part of the World War II effort, that here is this protein item that's in this indestructible can that lasts a very long time that can go to the ends of the earth in terms of distribution. And so our team used that as sort of a starting point, but recognized that if we wanted to address something meaningful in the area, we thought malnutrition was an area to go after, particularly among youth, and that 
Spammy, the concept of spam was a start, but we really wanted to tailor a unique product aimed specifically at addressing this need. What I'd like to do now is show you a video about that project, and then we'll talk about some of the partnerships that made that project a success. to work for a company like Hormel that has the vision to reach out beyond its walls, to reach out to its employees and, and challenge them to grow within themselves and to uh, show them that the company is more than just these four walls. It's an experience that you'll never forget. It will push you outside of your comfort zone. It will make you grow as a person. It'll make you grow as a leader. It's more than just product, it's actually our whole company working together to make a difference in a country's life. Project Spammy really started um, as Jeff Ettinger's idea. And Jeff's thought was, well, we do protein awfully well. Why couldn't we do something in a proactive approach to address malnutrition? So he basically came back with the idea to R&D, turned them loose, and then they came up with Spammy. We began a partnership with Food for the Poor and Caritas that helped us get the distribution from Beloit, Wisconsin, where we produce it, down to Miami, Florida, where Food for the Poor then ships it into Guatemala. And Caritas is then our kind of our feet on the ground and helps with the distribution to getting it out to the villages that need it. Guatemala, which is not the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, has by far the worst situation in regards with nutrition and children. And it is our pride and joy that a large organization like Hormel Foods has partnered with us to try to ease the suffering of parents who lose their children either to stunting, to disease, or to death. Spammy is a product that's specifically designed to address malnutrition, but it's also addressing the cognitive side, which is absolutely critical, so they can both learn and grow. We didn't just want to give them calories. We wanted to give them animal protein, because they were lacking protein in their diets, but also the essential vitamins and minerals they were lacking in their diets. The, the beauty of Spammy is it mixes in with whatever the culture's diet is. It can be spread on tortillas, it can be mixed in with rice, it can be mixed in with beans. So you don't have to change their habits, it becomes like an ingredient into their everyday diets. And that's, that's really one of the basic elements that makes this product so attractive. The project itself, it's a three-legged stool. The first is, is hunger. The second is improving the mental health of the person that's consuming Spammy versus just the physical health. And then thirdly, through the employee engagement trips, this engages the company on a much different level. I would say one of the unique aspects also that people probably don't know so much is we rely a lot on education as well as dietary improvement. We incorporated several workshops for both parents and caregivers for the children that focused on topics such as food safety and food-related hygiene and the importance of nutrition for all ages. I think the future of the project is bright. We've committed to stay in Guatemala and the success of the employee engagement trips has been huge both for the people that we're working with in Guatemala and for our own employees. I had no idea what it would be like when I went down, but I came back with a whole new perspective, um, not only of just life in general, but of our company. Knowing that Hormel is going above and beyond in this project and uh, making a difference and allowing their employees to be involved, it's, it's very rewarding. Um, you come back having a great appreciation for what you do have. It's very impactful, life-changing.
So when we initiated the project, we turned the team loose in terms of creating the product itself. But we learned a lot in the subsequent journey about what it really takes to have a project that's going to be workable on a broad basis. I went to one slide too fast. So we learned about partnerships. We understood the notion that if we, if we were going to donate a product into a new marketplace, that there was some significant risk of the product not getting to the proper end user. So we understood that aspect of wanting to have secure distribution. But we learned it really took a lot more than that to have the project be successful, and it made everything much richer. I want to highlight about four of our partnerships and, and talk to you briefly about what each, the role each of them played in this regard. So Caritas, Caritas is the entity within Guatemala that yes, they handle the distribution. We actually ship through Food for the Poor, another great partner of the company in Miami, and then they get it in country to Guatemala to Caritas, and then it's Caritas's job to get it out to the users within the, the rural and local villages. However, that distribution comes with education, it comes with the notion of really involving the families and, and the institutions that are going to be involved. Caritas, for example, came up with the clever idea that as we donated a case of product to a, a, a family within a given community, that we would have them bring back each of the cans when they were done with it at the end of each month. That not only helped in terms of recyclability, and we were able to provide a little further compensation for that recycling, but also ensured that indeed the products were consumed by the, the end users that it was intended for, so very clever. Caritas was also instrumental in the idea of employee engagement trips. Now, that was mentioned in the video. A number of our spokespeople talked about that. But, I mean, candidly, we, we did not envision that initially. We thought, okay, we're going to ship the product into Guatemala. We'll have a couple people go down as sort of an advance force to make sure everything looks all right. And that might be the end of our hands-on involvement. But it was the richness of that connection with Caritas and what we got from each other that really encouraged us to kind of take that a step beyond. And indeed, by now, we've had 18 different mission trips, over 300 of our folks. They take their own week of vacation, they pay their own airfare, and then we cover all the other expenses while they're in the country for a week working on the project. So we had this inspiration about, okay, we, we can do shelf-stable protein. We understood that fortification was going to be important, but what fortification? What should we be aiming for that would be specific to this audience in Guatemala that would be of the most help? So we work with the organization Cesium and Dr. Noel Solomons to arrive at the fact that vitamin D and vitamin B12 needed to be the focal points of the nutritional fortification of the project. Around the same time, USAID was coming out with the notion of developing or adopting non-cereal-based products for the management of nutritional deficiencies. And indeed, we felt that our fortified protein item, a turkey-based item, would be excellent in terms of delivering this kind of high-quality protein with the essential fats, the intrinsic vitamins and minerals, and would, was high, highly desirable for this program. So but between the work of Dr. Solomons and with that inspiration, we ended up with prototype product but now the notion was, okay, we think this is going to be a beneficial product. How can we prove that out? Well, we received a real shot in the arm by being named one of the McGovern Dole program recipients of a research grant. And indeed, through this grant, we were able to test the efficacy of the product and, and frankly, the, the fact that it's a food product. And so we wanted the, fo the folks who were going to consume the product to enjoy the product and be able to use it on a beneficial basis. I'd like to share with you now a brief video that talks about that research methodology that was part of the McGovern Dole program. We were honored to partner with the USDA as part of the McGovern Dole Micronutrient Fortified Food Aid Product Pilot. The key objectives of our program included assessing the acceptability of SPAMI as part of a school feeding program, testing the effectiveness of SPAMI to improve attendance, micronutrient status, and cognitive performance educating communities regarding nutrition and food safety. We designed a double-blind, randomized, and controlled 20-week feeding program at a daycare center in the city of Peronia, a low-income area outside of Guatemala City. As the daycare center was located near a city dump, several improvements were made to the center to control insects. Additionally, enhancements were made to help the staff efficiently prepare meals and improve food safety. 
After explaining the program in detail, consent was obtained from parents or guardians. We used the Spanish language version of the Bracken Basic Concept Scale to measure cognitive function. This scale is unique in that it has been validated in Spanish and provides a highly reliable assessment for this young age group. At the beginning and end of the program, blood was drawn to assess changes in micronutrient status and heights and weights were measured. As an incentive, a new pair of shoes was provided to each participant. Ten recipes were created based on traditionally consumed foods. These were incorporated into the daily menu on a rotating basis. Monitors were hired to record consumption and fondness of the supplemented meals. The spammy containing meals were served to the children at breakfast time, allowing the maximum number of children to participate in the study. Fortified and unfortified versions of spammy were produced for the intervention. Meals served to the treatment and control groups were identical, except that the fortified version, turned spammy blue, was used in items prepared for the treatment group, and the unfortified version, spammy red, was used for controls. Meals were served on blue or red plates to clearly indicate whether spammy blue or spammy red had been incorporated. Training sessions were held to educate teachers on program goals and objectives. Monitors were taught to track and accurately record consumption, and parents were given a presentation about the importance of micronutrients. A workshop geared toward daycare staff addressed issues of food-related hygiene and proper food handling techniques. Each of our partners brought a unique set of skills to the program. Food for the Poor provided in-kind support and expertise in transportation and distribution of Spammy in Guatemala. Caritas developed recipes and helped link us with the daycare facility. Cesium provided scientific expertise and conducted educational workshops. Creighton University analyzed vitamin D status. Tufts University analyzed vitamin B12 status. Shaney Salazar coordinated and conducted the cognitive assessment and Dr. Bruce Bracken helped us analyze and interpret the cognitive results. So the results of the test were very favorable and we were pleased that in 2015, Spammy, our fortified poultry-based meat spread, was added to the US aid food list. This product really works very well for a variety of reasons. It's made from high quality white and dark meat, turkey meat. We specifically picked turkey as opposed to what we're kind of known as a pork company, but we realized in other parts of the world that as we expand the program that pork might be problematic and turkey was a much more acceptable protein source. Uh, we have been aiming at providing the product to children and nursing mothers. We found that it mixes very easily and as an ingredient and this, the element of shelf stability has been really key to the ultimate distribution. This blending occurs in Guatemala in a couple of ways. We do a lot of institutional-based programs, so that research video you saw was within a controlled school environment, and indeed, SPAMI is provided uh, in many areas in Guatemala in that kind of environment. But it also goes directly into homes, and so we wanted to do research to make sure that it was gonna work well with the kinds of dishes that, that they were providing in home. We've also provided a recipe kind of sharing device between the institutions and the homes so that people can find different ways to enjoy the product. And then speaking of partnerships, we've been very pleased to be partners with the World Food Prize and their interns during the summer. So for the last three years, we've had folks in country in Guatemala working on elements of the project that have been very beneficial for us overall. So going forward, our team still wants to embrace that spirit of innovation uh, interestingly, since the project has started, we've made a couple of acquisitions that have gotten us into new realms that might be interesting in terms of fortification and, and the areas of malnutrition as well. We acquired the Skippy peanut butter brand, and so peanut paste or peanut based items, again, uh, might be beneficial there. We also acquired a brand, a sports fitness brand called Muscle Milk, which utilizes whey protein in both a powder and ready to drink basis, and so we're exploring those kind of options as well. But one thing I can assure you going forward, the, the, the initiative will embrace the spirit of innovation that was kicked off by our founders back in 1891, and it will embrace the spirit of partnerships and how much we can learn from each other. I want to thank you for your time this morning. That was great. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. That was 